You need a loop on the ground isolation transformer, but you don't want to pay the buku dollars that DXC charges for their beverage transformer? I got you. Coming up. Let's run through the parts list really quick of what you're going to need to build this isolation transformer for your loop on ground antenna. Obviously, you're going to need some kind of project box a little enclosure box. I think we can get everything to fit in here. We're gonna try. Might take a little bit of ingenuity, but we'll do it. You're gonna need a way to connect your loop on ground antenna to your box. And I'm just running bolts with little wing nuts on the top of them. We'll drill some holes in this box to attach those. Uh, small little ring terminals, which are gonna go on the inside of the project box to your wing nuts or bolts or whatever other mechanism you decide to hook your antenna up with. You're going to need a coax connector. I am using an F type 75 ohm because 75 ohm coax is cheap and I can buy hundreds of feet of it for next to nothing. You're going to need some small pickup wire. Uh, you don't have to use different colors. I'm using different colors just to show you which way the windings will go on the toroid. Tw 28 gauge probably good um, you can use the enameled uh, magnet wire if you want to put up with uh, sanding or scraping or burning the enamel off of that when you go to solder these connections on this happens to be just the wire that's on the inside of a cat 5 connector not a, not a connector the cable the wire that's on the inside of a, a cat 5 cable I think it'll work fine as long as it's an insulated wire we should be good so that'll be a good test the meat and potatoes of the whole thing right here this is the 73 mix binocular ferrite core and we on the coax side which is going to be the orange we're going to do two windings and that'll give us between 50 and 75 ohms for two windings and then on the high and pin side which is going to be your antenna side we're going to do between five and six windings which is going to be the green wire that's going to go to the wing nut terminals up here you're going to want five windings on your antenna side for a 75 ohm connection. You're going to want six windings or six turns for a 50 ohm. So we're going to do five windings. So this is going to end up, end up being a two turn on the orange and a five turn on the green through this binocular core 73 mix ferrite. Links to everything in the description below where you can pick them up yourself. I guess the first thing we need to do is drill some holes in this box to see if we can fit all of this stuff. I'm thinking maybe the F connector on the side and the two wing nuts, maybe caddy corner, because it's kind of a small box. You really can't put them side by side. So maybe caddy corner on the wing nuts. Drill some holes and see what we can do. All right, we got some holes drilled in the box and so we got everything mounted. Got our two wing nut terminals where our antenna leads are going to attach. You just screw them on, screw them on. Right now they're still kind of loose because I got to take it back apart. Got our F-type connector awesomely, perfectly centered left to right and top to bottom. So that's always a plus. And this is what the inside of it looks like. We're gonna, our two leads for our F-type connector, our, to our toroid will be down here in the bottom of the box and the antenna leads connect to the bottom of those bolts with crimp on uh, crimp on connectors and these are also heat shrink so I will heat shrink over these one thing I will say though this is not a watertight box okay once you're done assembling all of this I would put a little dab of silicone in each of these holes your f-type hole where you drilled holes in these boxes this does not have a seal grommet around it. I would do a little dab of silicone just so when you put this thing back together, uh, you won't get water in it and stuff like that. But uh, we are ready to go ahead and wrap the toroid. Let's get started on that. All right, wrapping the Mix 73 binocular core toroid on the coax side 
like I said, we're going to want two turns for a 50 to 75 ohm match on the coax side. So we're going to do two turns of the orange. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to come up and down the other side of the core. So that's one turn. Make sure you don't have any twists in there. So that's one turn through the center of the core. And you're going to do one more. Up. Keep everything tight. And back down. So that's going to be your two turns for the coax side. That's going to be your two turns for the coax side. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut these just to a little bit of length just to get them out of my way here. I'm going to give myself about four inches. I don't need that much, but I'd rather have a little bit too much right now than not enough. So we've got two turns on the coax side. Now let's go ahead and do the antenna side or the high impedance winding. This is going to be five turns if you're going to run 75 ohm cable and six turns if you're going to run 50 ohm cable. I'm running 75 ohm cable, so we're going to do five turns. From the opposite end of the toroid, we're going to go up. Give us some room here on the bottom. Give us about a four inch, four or five inches on the bottom here. And back down. Make sure we're not twisting. That is number one. Up. Down. Are you keeping everything nice and tight? That's number two. Up. I know, this is really boring. But, gotta do it. And back down. This is gonna be number three. And you see now why you need some pretty small gauge wire. There's not enough, there's not that much room in this binocular core here. So we got, we have three. That is four. Keeping everything nice and snug and tight. And we need one more for 75 ohm. Because we're doing five wraps here. You know, I would say if you're doing uh, six wraps, this wire might be a little bit too thick, actually. I think I can, hopefully. Yay! I'd be hard pressed to get six of this type of wire in here. Trying to jam it through. Come on. <laughs> One more wrap is all we need just to go down. There we are. And that's five. Make sure they're nice and nice and tight. And uh, we'll trim these off to uh, about four inches as well. So what we have so far, we have the orange, which is gonna be our coax side going to our feed line. And that is two windings, two windings on the orange or two turns on the orange. The green is the high impedance side, which is gonna go to our wing nut terminals on top of our box that either side of our loop is going to connect to. There's five turns on that side for 75 ohm. If you're doing a 50 ohm, you'll want one more turn on the green. But there we have it. Let's get the ends stripped to length 
and get this mounted into the project box. I'm thinking mount it uh, just some double-sided tape or something. I just want to stick it down right there so it doesn't move maybe right there in the middle somewhere. And then uh, we can get things soldered up. So let's go ahead and cut these a little bit to length here. This is my antenna side. One of these wires is going to go to the center conductor of your antenna. The other one's going to go to the ground. It does not matter which one. So we're just going to cut these roughly to length. Pretty pliable wire so you can bend it around. So I'm going to give myself there and there. I'm going to leave these long on purpose. That way we can take the top of the box off later. I'm going to get these stripped off and I got to grab some double sided mounting tape and I'll do that. I'll be right back with that. All right. I had to go over there because my cord on my soldering iron won't fit all the way. Which way am I on the camera? All right. I got them soldered up. My I got one side going to the ground side of my F type connector. The other side going to the center lead of my F type connector and those are soldered on and we are ready to attach the antenna side of our transformer to the little ring terminals that's that are going to go on to um, the wing nuts that I have. So I'm going to get these stripped off in there, crimped, and I'm going to heat shrink these. Be right back. Here we are. Got the ring ter Ooh, they're still kind of warm. Got the ring terminals uh, crimped on and heat shrinked. And these are going to go to the underside of our lid here where we have the bolts for our wing nuts. So, figure out what order we want here. We probably want the flat side of that. And then a washer so we don't break it through then the bolt and a washer and a bolt excuse me a nut and then our wing nut will go on top of that so that is one one done get you right there so I can still close the, the lid here and I'll tighten these nuts up really well once I uh, once I get them in here. The bolt, the washer, washer nut, and then I'll come back and I'll tighten these up really good. But that's essentially what we're looking at everything's connected and then hopefully I can still close this thing <laughs> there we have it this box comes with two screws like I said this box is not in any means water resistant or waterproof so you are going to want to put some silicone around all the holes you drilled, silicone around the edges so you can keep it like that. I'm going to tighten up these nuts right here and then uh, I'm going to go test this thing and I'll let you know how it works. Well, there you have it. We built the loop on the ground a beverage, not a beverage, the loop on the ground <laughs> isolation transformer that's needed if you run a loop on the ground antenna. You could also use this for a beverage. You just have to have a, add a terminating resistor to it. But links in the description below to everything that I used. And also links in the description below to a couple of resources where you can read up on this, where I got my information from. Wealth of knowledge out there on the interwebs. I appreciate you coming along for the ride. Hopefully I saved you a couple of dollars from uh, buying this commercially made from whatever vendor commercially makes them. Not going to call anybody out. We're all friends here. Till next time, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell. It really helps out everything here on YouTube with the algorithm. Have a great time, guys. See ya.